It is a serious medical condition, and each body was assigned a number. Were placed in wooden coffins. The Titanic was one of the largest and most famous ocean liners in history, which leaped into the headlines when on the night between 14 and 15 April 1912, it sank following a collision with an iceberg. The opening of some leaks under the waterline on the right side of the ship caused a progressive flooding of five of the six watertight compartments that had come into contact with the iceberg. Two hours and 40 minutes after the collision, exactly at 20 past two on April 15, the Titanic broke into two pieces, sinking into the icy waters of the North Atlantic Ocean and settling on the muddy seabed at a depth of 12,500 feet. Beyond the causes of the origin of the shipwreck, in this video we will delve into what happened to the passengers of the Titanic, how many survived, what happened to their bodies, and why did some disappear. According to data provided by the British Board of Trade, a British government agency, 2,224 people embarked on the Titanic. 1,316 were passengers, including 805 men, 402 women, and 109 children, and 908 crew members, including 885 men and 23 women. Titanic passengers were divided into three separate classes, determined by the price of their ticket and therefore by the services they had available. 325 people in first class, 285 people in second class, and 706 people in third class. In the first class, there were important members of the upper class, businessmen, politicians, industrialists, and bankers. In the second class, there were predominantly middle-class people, including professors, doctors, tourists, writers, and members of the clergy. In third class, however, there was a mixed group of lower-class people with different nationalities and ethnicities who emigrated from other countries to move to the United States or Canada to make a new life. The Titanic was equipped with 3,560 life jackets, 14 wooden launches from number 3 to number 16, two emergency cutter lifeboats, one and two, and four collapsible lifeboats, for a total capacity of 1,178 seats compared to the 2,224 on the ship. 18 of the 20 lifeboats were lowered into the sea during the sinking, although many of them carried only half their maximum capacity. The last two collapsible lifeboats, A and B, were overwhelmed by the water a few minutes before the liner sank. The first partially flooded, the second flipped over. Of the 1,178 places available, only 705 people managed to escape. Thus, 1,519 people remained on board the Titanic, who ended up in the cold waters of the Atlantic Ocean when the hull broke in two, disappearing forever into the darkness of the abyss. Most of the Titanic's passengers who fell into the water did not die from drowning, as almost all wore life jackets, but by hypothermia. It is a serious medical condition in which following prolonged exposure to cold, the body temperature drops below 95 degrees, minimum value for the proper functioning of the heart, brain, and other organs. The body loses heat faster than it can produce, and a state of mild hypothermia sets in, where the body temperature is around 90 degrees. Thus, there is a vasoconstriction of the blood vessels, and consequently there is an increase in peripheral vascular resistance, which tends to increase blood pressure and accelerate the heartbeat. Blood flow is diverted to the central part of the body, decreasing blood flow to the extremities, especially the hands and feet, which will immediately become colder as a result. The hypothalamus, a brain structure considered the thermostat of the body, thanks to the signals it receives from the body receptors, realizes that the body temperature is too low and therefore increases the production of heat at rest, thanks to a mechanism called cold-induced thermogenesis. Initially, there is what is called non-shiver thermogenesis, where heat is produced due to increased production of norepinephrine through activation of the sympathetic nervous system. 
Thus, some exothermic biochemical reactions occur in some organs and tissues, in particular, for example, in brown adipose tissue, skeletal muscle, and liver. If the cooling continues, shivering thermogenesis occurs, which as the name suggests heat is produced by shivering, irregular, and involuntary contractions that make the muscles tremble to try to warm us up. When your body temperature continues to drop and is between 90 and 79 degrees, it is called moderate hypothermia. A state of confusion is felt, the heart begins to beat irregularly, breathing slows down, and muscle stiffness is felt, as well as joint pain associated with the progressive freezing of the extremities. The most affected areas are the fingers and toes, nose, ears, lips, cheeks, and chin. Finally, a state of severe hypothermia occurs where the body temperature drops below 79 degrees. The vital functions are compromised, consciousness is lost and death occurs due to cardiocirculatory arrest. In the case of the passengers of the Titanic, the transition from one state of hypothermia to another was very short. Their bodies found themselves submerged in the icy waters of the Atlantic Ocean, where at 2 o'clock in the night, the temperature hovered around 32 degrees. A human being, without adequate protection, on average can resist about 10 15 minutes, maximum 30 minutes, before freezing to death. Others, on the other hand, died quickly from the thermal shock caused by the rapid drop in body temperature following contact with water. Death occurred by hydrocution, also known as syncope from rapid immersion, where the neurovegetative reflexes triggered by the rapid change in temperature lead to cardiocirculatory arrest or death by drowning. In fact, it is no coincidence that almost all of the 705 survivors were made up of people who had managed to find a place on the lifeboats. Only very few managed to survive once they fell into the water. Some were rescued by two lifeboats, which turned back to the disaster site to search for any survivors alive. Others managed to reach the semi-flooded collapsible lifeboat A, and still others managed to climb onto lifeboat B, which had capsized. Among the other causes of death, we find those due to the injuries sustained by passengers following collisions with objects that were hurled at full speed from one side of the ship to the other. Others drowned as they were trapped inside the ship, which began to take on more and more water, while others died as a result of the violent impact with the water. The Titanic had a length of 883 feet, a width of 92 feet, and a height of 173 feet. Now thought about the devastating impact that a body undergoes falling into the water from over 174 feet high. The latter is 800 times denser than air, and due to the acceleration that a falling body undergoes, it is as if it were falling on concrete, making the impact extremely violent. Think it would take just 3.2 seconds to reach the water, at an impressive 70 miles per hour. At the time of the sinking of the Titanic, the most likely shark species to be found in the frigid waters of the North Atlantic Ocean was the Greenland shark, but it is not considered dangerous to humans. According to the story of the survivors, in fact, there were no shark attacks that night, and the discovery of some of the bodies seemed to confirm their story, as they did not show any sign of a shark bite. Therefore, considering all the causes of death we have just talked about, the sinking of the Titanic led to the total death of 1,514 passengers of the 2,224 embarked, 68%, including 1,352 men, 109 women, and 53 children. In the days and weeks following the disaster, the White Star Line, the British shipping company that owns the Titanic, sent several steamers to search for the bodies of the passengers. The scene that presented itself to the eyes of the rescuers was an expanse of floating corpses and the white color of their life jackets recalled the appearance of a flock of seagulls. After having found them and taken them out of the water, they were placed on the deck of the steamer and identified. It was a very delicate and difficult operation as the bodies were frozen, some full of bruises, others seriously mutilated. 
The physical characteristics, clothing, and identifying marks of the deceased were all documented, and each body was assigned a number. Any personal belongings of the passenger were then collected, for example the objects found in the pockets, but also shoes, clothes, necklaces, rings, and they were registered. They were stored separately and labeled with the same number as the body. After these operations, the conservation of the body proceeded. The passenger's class would determine the treatment they deserved. Economic class, which was assumed by the clothes the deceased wore, or by the initials sewn on his clothes, or from the possible ticket that he carried with him. First and second class passengers were embalmed on board the steamer. It is a particular conservation technique that serves to prevent the decomposition of the tissues in order to preserve the appearance of the body. Subsequently, the bodies of first-class passengers were placed in wooden coffins, while those of second-class passengers were wrapped in canvas bags and stored separately. The bodies of third-class passengers and crew members, on the other hand, were not embalmed, but simply wrapped in canvas bags and piled on deck and then buried at sea. How? The bodies were quickly sewn into canvas bags with a steel bar at the end so that the body would sink. At the sound of the ship's bell, they were lowered into the water, while the reverend on board the steamer read a psalm and recited a prayer. Excessively mutilated and difficult to identify bodies were also thrown back into the sea, as were those that were not embalmed, because the stocks of chemicals necessary for this practice were not enough for everyone. This was because Canadian law prohibited unembalmed bodies from being brought ashore. Most of the bodies of first- and second-class passengers were transported ashore to the nearest port in Halifax, Canadian city in Nova Scotia. From here, they were transferred and buried in Fairview Lawn Cemetery. On four rows on a sloping hill within the cemetery, there were graves of grey granite engraved with the passenger's date of death, his name, if it has been possible to identify him, and the identification number that had been assigned to him at the time of discovery. In the days following the sinking, the steamers sent by the White Start Line recovered 333 bodies, of which 39 were first-class passengers, 32 were second-class, 75 were third-class, and 173 crew members, as well as 14 unidentified bodies. 143 of these were buried at sea, while 150 were buried in Halifax, and 40 returned to their families. The victims of the shipwreck, however, were 1,514, and the bodies found only 333, so 1,181 bodies were missing. Where did they go? The strong ocean currents carried many of the bodies away from the site of the shipwreck, so much so that three bodies were even recovered over 200 miles from the disaster site. As the days went by, the cadaveric phenomena led to the decomposition of the body, causing it to slowly sink. Other bodies were instead consumed by the large predators that populate the waters of the Atlantic Ocean and by scavengers of the sea. Others were trapped inside the ship when it sank, ending up at a depth of 12,500 feet. All of this explains why the remaining bodies were never found. The order of John Smith, commander of the Titanic, was to rescue the women and children first, but his order was misunderstood by the second officer, who prevented the men from boarding the lifeboats, even if the latter were half empty. The consequence of this practice led to the death of 80% of men and only 25% of women. As for children, however, the death rate was 48%. Also, the class to which they belonged played a fundamental role both in the probability of being saved during the shipwreck and in the treatment received after death. First and second class passengers had easier access to the lifeboats via the stairs leading to the deck, while third class passengers had considerable difficulty finding the way. This led to the deaths of 39% of first class passengers. 58% of second-class passengers and 76% of third-class passengers. 
Furthermore, the decision to save most of the bodies of first-class passengers was partly due to the assumption that being the richest, they would almost certainly have life insurance policies that would pay for their burial or cremation. More than a century after the sinking of the Titanic, the wreck still lies on the ocean floor at a depth of 12,500 feet. According to experts, due to salt corrosion and the action of some bacteria that are slowly eating away the 50,000 tons of iron that makes up the wreck's coating, the Titanic is destined to disappear completely by 2030.